Thank you, Judge Lo. We might need your services tonight. Hello. Thank you all for coming tonight. This show wouldn't have been possible with all, all the help from parents, teachers, the custodial team, and our administration. Thank you to the parents for helping your students work on lines, choreography, lyrics, and everything in between for the past three months. I am sure many of you feel like you could jump right up here and do these dances also. <laughs> this is my fifth year here at Haymarket, and this is Batiata's fourth year. The students here love to perform, and it's been so amazing to watch them grow and progress over the years. We are part of the lucky few that get to teach all of the students here at Haymarket. There are quite a few of the Encore team here tonight. I'm excited to see you, as well as other teachers and staff. Uh, I'm not really prepared to talk about the fact that Mrs. Batsayada is leaving Haymarket. It has truly been a pleasure and an honor to work with her. She's made our students fall in love with music. <laughs> I can make them look cute, but she makes them sound amazing. And a musical, after all, first and foremost, means music. It's in the name, like we tell the students. <laughs> we are the yin to each other's yang, we're work wives, and we're great friends who get to work together. And next year, she'll probably have a shocking amount of free time on her hands. She might even get to see that guy, Mr. Batiata. Wave your hand. Yeah. <laughs> and without me roping her into projects and chatting with her throughout the day. But don't worry, I'll make her come back and visit and perhaps do a few Zoom consults with some of these lovelies on some future productions. <laughs> projects like this bring together students from across the grade levels and challenge the students creatively in a variety of ways. We've watched the students greatly improve each and every day. Even from Monday to today, the show is a different show, and it is a wonderful, wonderful progression. We're so proud of them. We have 45 students in the show, representing almost all the classes in third, fourth, and fifth grade. And it's been amazing to see how students really made the most of their roles and made it their own. It's been incredible to see them try something new or go for a part that challenged them in a new and exciting way. Every role is important in our show. We feel like we placed every cast member in a way that would showcase their talents as well as stretch their acting and performing abilities. We have had a lot of fun learning some old school dance moves, as they call them. <laughs> the good ones is what I call them. And <laughs> acting with big facial expressions and having funny moments in the background. Don't sleep on what's going on in the background. There's a lot of funny stuff. And of course, we love a moment that can be made a little extra with a prop or two. <laughs> and we have some cameo appearances this weekend from administration, teachers, parents, and alumni. Tonight, our show will feature Hunter Vickers' dad, Mr. Vickers, and Haymarket actor alumni Colby Pugmire as some wacky inflatable tube men. We have two now. And they will also both fill in for Dr. Madison as the narwhal uh, running joke from Alf Jr. Because now we have two of those two. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let Matiana talk for a little bit. Normally I let her do all the talking because she's just so good at it. Love listening to her voice. But since this is my last production at Haymarket, I want to express how can't look at you. Um, grateful and proud I am of the past four years I've spent here. My pride for how this program has grown is on full display tonight. I just love every single one of these students with my whole heart. And they're just so great. I don't even know what I'm saying now. Um, <laughs> They work so hard on all this music. There's a lot of music in this musical, as you will soon hear, and their talent and work ethic just impressed us every step of the way, especially in the beginning. They learned everything right away. I often say to the kids, wow, you must have a really great music and drama teacher. 
Thank you to everyone who has made Haymarket my home away from home for the past four years since we do spend a lot of time here. And a special thank you to my partner, CW. I say this often and it holds true every day. You make my every day sparkly. Your spirit fills this school with life and love. You've made me a better teacher and this partnership with you has given me more than I could have ever imagined. Thank you. after scene 10, once um, Brucey gets to that game, uh, to allow our characters to get some water and a chance for you to stretch your legs and use the restrooms. Restrooms can be utilized during intermission by the audience on the side of the auditorium or the ones closest to the music room. The actors will remain in the music room during intermission. I also know the students uh, who might be here in our audience are very familiar with many of the songs from the show, especially When I Grow Up, since that was one of her songs of the month. However, our cast sings a slightly different version of the song, and it becomes hard for them to hear the music and their cues if people are singing along. So tonight, please allow them to sing the version that is from the show that they have rehearsed so beautifully. We are missing a couple of our cast members tonight due to illness, but they are here with us in spirit. And the role of Amanda Thripp will be played by Zoe Beth, and the role of Alice will be played by Lila. And I talked to Piper today, and she said, break a leg, everyone. We are not aiming for perfection tonight. Our goal is to make you smile, to have fun performing, and for everyone to feel the magic of live theater. These kids have become a family to us, and we are so proud of them. I think the story of Matilda is one that resonates with children and adults alike. It's a book a lot of people remember, maybe due to the movie, but I think it's also the plot line. We're all trying to find our voice in life and where we fit, and we're always gra gravitating towards people that bring out the best in ourselves. Students want the confidence of Matilda, and adults, especially teachers, want to be the teacher that all the students love. These students are about to show how hard they have worked, and they want to have fun, do their best, and enjoy bringing the magic of a story to life. So, um, Roald Dahl, the author of Matilda, said, if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams, and you will always look lovely. So, we're going to have good thoughts about tonight, and shine on stage, and manifest good vibes for our actors. And of course, they look lovely. They're outfitted by us. How could they not? <laughs> and now, <clears throat> trunch ball, can you blow your whistle, please? I'm going to turn into the trunch ball for a minute here. I'm not going to get real. Okay. If you are here tonight, you came to see a show. Tonight, this space is not a gym, it is not a cafeteria, it is not a playground and it is not a neighborhood block party, sorry to say. Tonight, this space is an auditorium. Audience, I need you to conduct yourself how you would at any performing arts center. Last night, from the audience, we had children not sitting with their families and not sitting in chairs. Children, we need you to remain with your families and in chairs. There was talking throughout the performance from children and <gasps> adults. Dun, dun, dun. During intermission, people were climbing on lunch tables and running around playing tag and even pulling up on the pull-up bars. <gasps> please, please, please. We have worked too hard on this show, and their performances, let me tell you what, are too good to not be heard properly. When Miss Matilda sings quiet, it should be just that, quiet. This is our final show, so please allow our actors to perform the show that they've worked so hard to prepare for you. So students, stay with your families, in chairs, the entire time. Adults, please be good role models for the children around you. If you have brought a water bottle, please keep it 
quiet during the performance. <laughs> if I sound crazy, you should have been here last night. <laughs> and please, uh, if any littles need a break, please take them to the audit outside of the auditorium to the side hallway. And please silence your cell phones if you have not done so already. Thumbs up if we all understand how to be quality audience members. All right, John Schwell, can you blow your whistle again? All right, back to CW. Let's start the show. Stop 
I'm your mother with that book, boy. I'm a girl. And she keeps trying to tell me stories, Harry. It's not normal for a girl to be all thinking. I'm going to have to call you straight back. I'm trying to pull off the biggest business deal of my life. And I have to listen to this. What about me? I've got a whole house to look after. Dinners don't microwave themselves now. <laughs> well, I'm off to clean my room and I shan't be talking to you for the rest of the evening. But well, I'm going to make us rich. How rich? Very rich. Capable businessmen, but very, very genius. Your genius husband is going to sell them 155 old bears as brand new luxury cars. But that's not fair. The cars will break down. What about the businessmen? Fair, listen to the boy. I'm a girl. Fair does not get you anywhere you think any twit brain. All I can say is thank heavens my cause. Michael inherited his old man's brains. Hey son, my call. <laughs> well, I shall take the money when you earn it and I shall spend it. But I shan't enjoy it because of the despicable way in which you have spoken to me tonight. <laughs> this is all your fault with your ridiculous books and your ridiculous reading. But that's not right. You're off to school in a few days and I know you had me. Imagine what she's going to do to a horrible little goblin like you, boy. I'm a girl! Now get off the bed, you.
The boys are loony. Mum, would you like to hear a story? Don't be disgusting. The sooner you're locked up in school, the better.
Miss Honey, and today is a very special day. Your first day at school. Now, can anyone read this? Very well, Nigel. It's, um, well, it's... Yes, I think we'd better leave it there, Nigel. We don't want you to burst a blood vessel on your first day. Lavender? Is the first word tomato? Um, no, but tomato is a very good word. Yes. Matilda, I can now read words. So, Matilda, you can read words? Well, I need to learn to read words so that I can read sentences because basically a sentence is just a big bunch of words. And if you can't read sentences, you've got no chance with books. And have you read a whole book yourself? More than one. I love books. Last week I read quite a few. A few? What books did you read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, The Lord of the Rings, Crime and Punishment, and The Cat in the Hat. Ah. Thank you. 
Amanda Frick. Yes, Miss Truthful? What have I told you about wearing pigtails? I hate pigtails. But my mommy says you can look pretty. Then your mother is a twit. <laughs> Now, look at you and look at me. 
on chairs and make sure we are having a nice conduct during intermission as well. Thank you. We'll see you in a few. Bathrooms out here or out here. See you soon.
The escapologist's daughter suffered in silence, never saying a single word about the evil arts bullying. This only encouraged the woman to greater cruelty. So one day, she exploded. You are useless, filthy, naughty little brain! And the aunt beat her and threw her into a dead, dark, dusty cellar, locked the door and went out.
I've taught them. That's all. The kindness, patience, and respect. How dare you bring those words into my classroom, madame? You know nothing of teaching, and I shall prove it. You spent a dinner and made us a breakfast. But that's not a word. You just made it up. Spell or go to choking. A M C H E L L A. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Dear. Okay. I'm so sorry, Uncle Simon. Z. Your go.
later, I received a letter that said my parents' will had turned up, and that I was now the owner of the beautiful old house which had belonged to my evil aunt. One out of the trunk drawer, he was never seen again. The trophies were immediately destroyed, and a new headmistress took over. And her name was Miss Honey, and we've often said that it was the best school in all the land. Matilda was never again able to move things with her eyes. She said it was because she no longer had the need for superpowers. But she was still stuck with parents who were mean and cruel and called her names.
up can we have the shady businessman, the mechanic, and the Amanda, Lavender, and Nigel. <laughs> Next we have Mr. Wormwood. <laughs> Mrs. Wormwood. <laughs> Michael.
Thank you.